The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the X-Zone. Yeah, we're coming to you live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, Star Cable, and of course, our worldwide family of broadcast affiliates right across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean. I was listening to uh, my show on the refeeds when we, when Laura and I were down in Mexico earlier this, uh, this year. And uh, of course, we're heard throughout uh, the Pacific Rim. Asia, India, Africa, and Europe. Worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Brian Griffith. And Brian grew up in Texas, studied uh, history at the University of Alberta, and now lives just outside of Toronto. He is an independent historian who examines how cultural history influences our lives and how collective experiences offer insights for our future. He is the author of The Garden of Their Dreams, uh, uh, Dissertation and Culture in World History, Different Views, uh, Visions of Love, Partnership and Denominator, Values in Christian History, and Correcting Jesus, 2,000 Years of Changing the Story. And Brian, welcome to the X-Zone. Hello. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about where your interest came into the the type of books that you write and, and, you, and your love for history. Well, you know, I, I think I've had a mental mix-up from living in several places. <laughs> as, as you say, I grew up in, in Texas with all the culture wars over Jesus and the American way. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I lived in India, where they have a lot of goddess religions, yeah. and in Kenya, where it seems like the men are the bosses and the women are the real leaders. And then I ended up in Toronto, where everything gets uh, mixed together. So, um, you know, I, I put out recently one book about uh, ch- correcting Jesus, and mm-hmm. the other one about uh, Chinese goddesses. So, I mean... As um, as a Western man, I always thought religion was a mainly male thing mm-hmm. because um, the gods and priests and rabbis and the mullahs that I knew all seemed to be male. And I heard there used to be women's religions, like the pre-Christian pagan religions or the cults of witches, but uh, those were stamped out as superstitious nonsense a long time ago by whatever means necessary. So basically both the goddesses and the female leaders were for a long time eliminated from religion in the West. And I got to wondering what religion would look like if women made it and how would they do it different. And, of course, the answer to that was staring us in the face because Across India and China and much of the world, there's big popular goddess religions that are alive today, and right. we can just look at them and see how they're different. How many different religions are there in the world today? Uh, well, gee, I, I don't know. It's an, it's an incredible number, and hmm. I don't really know how to add them up because, you know, for example, looking at the Chinese goddess religions, yes. there's... Uh, you know, some some of them have a hundred or up to five hundred million devotees in the world, but they're not normally added together as as if that was a religion. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, and they and they cross over a lot. Uh, a lot of these Chinese goddesses are 
they're revered in several different religions spread out all over that part of the world. Gotcha. Brian, you and I have to take a commercial break. Please stand by. Great talking to you, and it's nice talking to somebody uh, here in Ontario. Brian Griffith is our special guest this hour, Exxon Nation. Here's the website I'd like you to go to if you'd like to buy any of uh, Brian's books or find out more about Brian. His website is www.exterminatingangel.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Brian Griffith and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. We all desire health, happiness, and fulfillment, but often get in our own way. Repeated patterns that leave us out of control can keep us feeling powerless, frustrated, and unable to move forward in spite of our best efforts. Unconscious patterning disconnects us from our gifts, often destroying the very thing we seek. But there is an answer. We can take charge of our destiny and heal the trauma of our history. Shamanism is an effective ancient modality that can reconnect us with our true selves, empower the creation of our dreams, and return us to health and balance. Cody Alexander is a certified shamanic practitioner and teacher with 11 years experience. Email healingpathways33 at gmail.com or visit codyalexander.net to schedule a long-distance shamanic session today. Welcome back, everyone. My guest is Brian Griffith. And um, before we get back to Brian, I'd just like to spread some news with you, the members of the Exo Nation Worldwide. You are now able to go to Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk and buy the X Chronicles newspaper each and every month in print. That's right. You can go to Amazon.com and buy the X Chronicles newspaper for, uh, let me see, June. The July-August is going to be there. The September of uh, the uh, August September issue is going to be there. We're going to be doing this every month. Plus, plus. Now here's a biggie. We are in the middle now of editing three books, three books that have the entire history, the historical volumes of the X Chronicles newspaper going back to. Uh, let me see. The la- the first edition was October 1992, and every month thereafter. So you'll be able to get the X-Chronicles now online. You'll get the X-Chronicles newspaper in print. We sell the X-Chronicles on a DVD book. No matter how you want to now get your edition of the X-Chronicles newspaper, it's done for you. You, the XO Nation, have asked for it, and we have done our best to make sure that we take care of you. By the way, there's a new Relmar website at www.rel-mar.com. Same domain name that we've had for 
10 years now. Totally new look. My guest this hour is Brian Griffith, and uh, Brian and I are talking about religion. We're talking about goddesses. We're talking about correcting Jesus or the story or the information about Jesus. And Brian, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It's it's great talking to you. Uh, well, thank you. But, you know, when, when people talk about goddesses, they they usually think of, all right, all right, it has something to do with witchcraft and Wicca or New Age spirituality or or Egyptology, but it's much broader than that, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, there's a lot, there was a, stigmatiza- mm-hmm. a stigmatization of the women's religions, but, you know, this is basically uh, religions that grow out of, of women's experience, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious about how that would be, because in Western history, we pretty much purged that side of the story from things for a long time. And, and that's why, you know, I'm interested in looking at, at places where, you know, all, all through history, there's been big women's religions going on, and they were never stamped out. They never had witch hunts to get rid of the village wise women they're they're still there and and they're still popular um you know so uh if you if you look at like chinese uh women's religions of course we can't generalize Mm -hmm. that you know chinese women have certain qualities or anything but in their in their popular traditions you know there's there's certain values that i think we can see or common um they tend to share certain values they usually assume a reverence for life and the power to conceive or nurture it and they commonly take this literally female power as the greatest power of all um so you know in china these religions have always been popular they're not they're not official religions Mm -hmm. but they're popular and they show the values and ideals that women have respected most and one example you know this is a little bit contrary contradictory to uh evil sorceresses and uh, example of the goddess guan yin or Quan yin mm-hmm. who's clearly the most popular deity in china for the past 500 years and has maybe 500 million devotees in the world. Wow. And unlike many goddesses in world history, she's she's not a symbol of motherhood or wifely duty or ideal sexuality. She's she's portrayed as a fully enlightened world savior who's with compassion for all creatures and and of course, many worshippers see her as a superior being who's probably made of spiritual matter and who lives in heaven and responds to prayers. But you so know, it almost to sounds of, it almost sounds parallel to how Catholicism looks at the Virgin Mary. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of parallels. But, yeah, you know the way the way I like to think of her is is like a figure of popular literature, like. You know, Joseph Campbell would explain mm-hmm. that a deity is an image of whatever people feel is the highest and the best in life. And, you know, an image like that can shape people's dreams and goals. And, um, you know, I think that in the future, in a future planetary culture, it's possible that Guan Yin will be become uh, just about the most widely respected image of female spirituality in the world. And then, you know, there's thousands of other Chinese goddesses. Some of them are mythical spirits of nature, and others are masters of yoga-like spiritual disciplines, like the Taoist master Sun Bu Er. Some of them are heroic fighting shamanesses like Chen Jingu and her band of sworn sisters. Um, and a fair number of them have nationwide or, or global appeal. Like there's around 100 million devotees of a goddess called Mazu. 
So that right there is a religion that's vastly larger than Judaism. And, you know, we have all the, the cults of these deified women like Guan Yin, Sun Bu Er, Chen Jingu, or Mazu were all lumped together. It would count as one of the world's biggest religions. When we look at Christianity and, and uh, especially Catholicism and and how the um, the 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 Virgin Mary or you know, is revered, that's one parallel that that you and I have discussed. But you know, in Christianity, though in, in the Bible it says, "And thou shalt have no other gods before me." Yet you go into uh, certain churches, and all the saints are revered as well. So basically, when we're looking at certain religions that have the saints that are being prayed to, can they be classified as demigods? Well, you know, in in China, prob- you know, the, probably all the deities, I mean, there's nature mm-hmm. deities, but then most of the deities are actually people. Um, they're saint-like or guru-like figures uh, who are just revered. They're like elevated to sainthood by right. popular demand, and they were acclaimed to be God. Like like and, Saint Francis of Assisi. Um, yeah, people pray right. to Saint Francis. They say that he intercedes uh, to help them, and so on. Um, but, you know, even if there's not magical powers that they appear and so on, still, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're people in history who were, they're regarded as masters who attained some sort of enlightenment and were teachers. And, but, you know, since the followers can learn what the teachers teach, most of these goddesses and other the deities, they're, they're examples to be learned from, not, not like they're super, uh, eternally superior beings to be obeyed. Um, you know, in the, in the woman-friendly traditions there, people commonly pictured their deities as ultimate parents mm-hmm. or teachers or friends and not like they're kings or lords. And uh, most of them were, you know, flourished among common people rather than the dominant groups. And they they seldom had any kind of official status or backing from the government. Um, they were popular, but they didn't usually control any big organizations. And their authority just came from their personal qualities, not from any position of rank or, or office. So... They're, they're called, you know, this is, uh, people make a distinction between organized religion and unorganized religion. So these these uh, goddess cults were sort of unorganized, and so they're called popular religion instead of, um, instead of organized religion. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll free. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. My special guest this hour is Brian Griffith, and if you'd like to find out more about Brian, he's got a couple of he's got a website here that uh, I urge you to go to Exxon Nation www.exterminatingangel.com. I've got a question for you, Brian, and and maybe you can help me shed some light on it. How many gods worldwide are there? Um. Well. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, there's thousands yeah. of of women in China who are regarded as deified figures. Uh, just thousands of them. The whole and, and it's like India as well. I mean, the, the countryside is haunted by thousands of people who are regarded as as uh, deified or saint or sainted figures. Um, you know, and and there often you can trace the historic person behind it. Like one example from ancient times in China is a woman called Ti Yang, and she dared challenge the emperor with an appeal for mercy on prisoners. 
and her boldness won a legal ban on the worst kinds of torture, and she became a goddess in the popular mind. All right, what we have to do here, Brian, is we have to take a commercial break with the news at the bottom of the hour. We'll be right back. Brian, thanks very much for joining us. I look forward to spending the next half hour with you as well. Exonation Brian Griffiths is our special guest. Um, one of his books is A Galaxy of Immortal Women, The Inside of Chinese Civilization. And we're going to be more talking more to Brian about religion, gods, goddesses, and even Jesus Christ himself on the other side of this break. 1-800-610-7035, worldwide, toll-free, email com, And to Ed Shiflett at Master Control in Orlando, Florida. Ed, nice talking to you, buddy, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. By the way, Ed, congratulations on your marriage. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. Brian Griffiths is my special guest, and uh, for finding out more information about Brian, the books he's written, uh, www.exterminatingangels.com. Brian, uh, you also wrote a book pertaining to Jesus, and the title of of that book is what? Uh, Correcting Jesus, 2,000 Years of Changing the Story. That's a very provocative uh, title. Tell me a little bit about that book. Well, you know, um, some people thought that I was presuming to to correct Jesus. Mm -hmm. They, They took it a little bit of about the way they took the title to the satanic verses, where, you know, they, people thought that the, the book was calling the Quran the satanic verses, when actually it was referring to some verses that Muhammad said mm-hmm. were satanic. Anyway, so the, some people took it the wrong way, but, you know, what I what I mean is, I think we all have reasons for thinking that the stories about Jesus have been changed over time. Like, as I was growing up in Texas, we believed that Jesus stood for the American way, mm-hmm. and he stood for national pride and strong-armed forces and 
free enterprise, and a lot of us also felt sure that he stood for a traditional subordinate roles for women, and and since I was in an all-white church, a lot of people felt it, it was a matter of Christian morality to keep the white and black races separate. Um, you know, so we felt sure that we believed in the Bible, but we also heard what we wanted to hear. For example, you know, when we heard that Jesus urged forgiving wrongdoers, mm -hmm. but we felt it was stupid to simply forgive offenders because they'd think they could get away with anything. And anyway, I got interested in looking at the changes Christianity's gone through down the centuries. And, you know, for example, back in the days of the Enlightenment during the French Revolution, the slogan of the revolutionaries was liberty, fraternity, equality. And it seemed like everybody assumed that this was a heretical rejection of everything Christianity ever stood for. And both the church leaders and the anti-Christian rebels accepted the idea that Jesus upheld the divine right of kings. And, of course, that raises the question of what Jesus taught about freedom, and the answers to that have been all over the moral map. Um, in the American Revolution, people mostly had the idea that freedom was a Christian thing, mm -hmm. but I remember one exchange in my Texas Sunday School class where somebody was saying that real Christians trust the Bible more than human reason, and somebody else in the room replied, then why did Jesus ask, why can't you decide for yourselves what is right? And the answer was, we can't because we're sinners. Anyway, I took to asking, you know, if we look over Christianity as we know it, what cases of officially correcting Jesus can we find on subjects like Judaism, forgiveness, women, freedom, violence, or compassion? And, and what answers did you come up with? Well, I mean, I would I would uh, go, you know, by subject by subject. I've got, uh, you know, a lot about women. They changed a lot about women. Um, so maybe I can just dive in on that. I got sure, a go right story ahead. about it. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of evidence that Jesus had great respect for women, and judging from the stories in Acts and Paul's letters. It seems like the early Christian movement started out proudly proclaiming the equality of men and women. And at first, Paul was proudly saluting the female leaders of almost every church he helped found across Turkey and Greece. In uh, Philippi, the leader was Lydia. In Colossia, it was Nympha. In Corinth, it was Chloe. In Philemon's town, it was Apia. In Philippi, there was two female church leaders. And anyway, in the books of Acts and Romans, it's full of praise of the women's female preachers. And then Paul and the later church leaders changed their tune. They started demanding that the women must shut up and wear head covering. And, you know, so why the big change? And I think the evidence is that they were dealing with ridicule from the surrounding society. And we have record of, of pagan critics ridiculing the Christians as a movement where the man had lost all control of women. And these ancient people usually assumed that if women were not controlled, then all the standards of morality would be tossed to the wind. And so to prove that they were a respectable religion, mm -hmm. the leading men needed to demonstrate that they were in charge. And then, instead of preaching a new order where all would be equal, they started insisting that all the traditions of inequality in the ancient Middle East had to remain in force for women. And, you know, they even altered uh, the text of Scripture to reinforce this. Um, the copyists changed 1 Corinthians to make Paul say, it is a good thing for a man to have nothing to do with a woman. 
And in the New English Bible, there's a footnote to this verse that says that the earlier versions of the text were written differently. And the older versions said, you Corinthians say it is a good thing for a man to have nothing to do with a woman, but because there's so much immorality, let each man have his own wife, etc. So in the original version, Paul was criticizing other people for advocating sexual segregation in the church. Hmm. But his defense of families working together disappeared with the simple deletion of a phrase, and in its place stood a, a corrected statement of naked contempt for all women. And then, reading the corrected text, St. Jerome explained, if it's good not to touch a woman, it is bad to touch one, for there is no opposite of goodness but badness. And this trend you know, it intensified with time. First, the women were drummed out of all the leadership and teaching roles. Mm -hmm. Then they lost their roles managing the church charities. And next, the issue rose of whether the purity of the priests would be compromised by being married to women. And is that where the celibacy, celibacy comes in? Because a, yeah, as they started arguing. Yeah, yeah, because as you and I both know, there's no mention within the Bible that a priest has to be celibate. Right, and the Council of Nicaea argued this in 325, and they made a ruling that's quite interesting. They ruled that if any priest divorced his wife and threw out his family on the pretext of piety, mm -hmm. then that priest should be thrown out of the church. And so for hundreds of years, most priests remained married down to the year 1074. And that's when the church overthrew the Council of Nicaea rule, and instead they demanded that all the priests must divorce their wives or else lose their jobs. And we can call this the greatest mass divorce in world history. And then, after throwing out all the church wives, the clerical heads went after the remaining female leaders in secular society to remove the village wise women in the witch hunts. Um, and, and fortunately, you know, just when it seemed like relations between men and women couldn't really get worse, it started going the other way. And a big part of this was the nuns mm -hmm. who had been confined to the cloister to protect their chastity, but they began refusing their enclosure orders and going out to handle problems in the streets. And they founded our modern service institutions, our schools, our hospitals. They gave education to girls. And, you know, nothing so revived the Catholic Church after the Protestant revolt as, as the female religious orders. And they saw themselves as caring servants rather than godly masters of society. And and they showed what the church would have been from the first if women hadn't been forcefully barred from partnership in its mission. So can we say that it's because of, of this religious, well, of, because of religion itself, that women were forced to take a second seat, and it's only because of the male ego that was so prevalent back in those days? Well, you know, the the history of Christianity and Islam are, mm -hmm. are fairly parallel on this. They start out with being righteous about equal rights for people. Uh, the first uh, Muslim women were... Uh, business managers, religious leaders, generals in the army, and then they they get this blowback to the tradition from before and reestablish all the ancient prejudices that the religion started out as a protest against. So, you know, they, they betray their own values and go back to ancient prejudices. Unbelievable. 
Where do you see religion going uh, in the in the future, Ted? As a histor as a historian, I'm sorry, Brian. As a historian, has it come to the point of our sociological development that religion is no longer required? Well, you know, I I think that religion is something that everybody has. Everybody has their sense of where they're going and what's important and where life comes from and what's what's it heading toward and what's and therefore what's good and helpful and mm-hmm. what's not everybody has their sense of that and so i think that that that's inherently religion right there and everyone has it in some way yes uh and everybody has their own sense of it. I mean, if I say that I'm a Christian, that doesn't really tell you very much about my own sense of what's important in life and where I'm going in life. You know, so I I think it's not like we're going to get rid of religion. I think people are going to do it with less a herd mentality. They're going to think for themselves what's my my aim in life and what works in getting there, you know. So mm-hmm. I think we're going to have a little more individual accountability rather than just following the herd on these things. What is your... Um, you, you I, I should say that you and I were talking uh, before during the commercial break with the news, and you actually did a, a, a lineage, I believe, when it comes to Jesus, uh, and you and I were talking about the number of fathers that he had. Oh well, you know they 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 put several myths together. They, they say he was he was born of God, but then they give the lineage of his father Joseph going back back with all the fathers of Joseph, and it, and they give the whole lineage going all the way back to Adam, mm-hmm. and then it says Adam was the son of God. Well, so I mean, basically one way or the other. Everybody on the whole lineage was a son of God, and Jesus talked about God as our Father. Yes. So, you know, and it's, you know, the same with the the Bible. Uh, you know, people collect all these stories from an ancient country of Israel, and they, and they say this is the story of God's people and God's country. And, you know, you could say the same thing about a history book of, uh, say, America— because a lot of people think that America is God's country and it's God's people. And since everybody's God's people, it's basically true. All right, stand so, by, Brian. You and I have to take our final break. Brian Griffiths is our special guest to this Our Exxon Nation. Interesting gentleman with an interesting topic. www.exterminatingangel.com. And uh, Brian and I will be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com.
true healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. That's what we're trying to do here this hour, give you something to talk about. My guest is Brian Griffiths. His website is www.eliminatingangel.com. I'm sorry, exterminating, exterminatingangel.com. Brian, so as a historian, is there any historical proof beside biblical accounts that Jesus really did exist? Well, I guess not, but... You know, I, I find it hard to really worry about that. And in other religions around the world, people don't think that their tradition hangs mm-hmm. on that kind of thing. Like, we could say the same thing about Buddhism. We could say, do we have really any record that the Buddha ever existed? And, you know, but there's this whole tradition of teaching and everything that's it's there. It's a reality in the world, um, and it and its validity does not depend on proving, um, you know, that the historical Krishna really lived at a certain date, or you know, the birth certificate of Buddha. Um, you know, I think that um, when people argue about the Bible, mm-hmm. they it, it often seems like an invalidation contest where either the book is completely inerrant or else it's complete garbage. But the Second Vatican Council in the 60s actually urged a middle path that's commonsensical on this, and, and it said these books, even though they contain material which is imperfect and obsolete, nevertheless bear witness to truly divine teachings um you know but is, is, so, isn't that isn't that a bit of a hypocritical paradox that religion has been expecting us to to swallow all these years because they they teach truth they teach justice they teach us not to lie and yet if there's yeah. nothing to evidence the basis of the religion how can they expect us to be honest when they themselves aren't well, you know, my my grandparents um, rejected a religion, mm-hmm. and they rejected it, and a lot of people around the world uh, rejected the people of the Chinese Revolution, just rejected re- religion as they knew it. And they rejected it because it didn't live up to its own values, which means that they basically believed and those kind of values themselves, and they wanted some integrity in holding to those values, and they were just criticizing people for being hypocritical about it. Brian, I'd love to continue this, but we've run out of time for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining us. XO Nation, Brian Griffiths has been my guest. Check out his website, www.exterminatingangel.com. That's www.exterminatingangel.com. Dot com, And I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as the Exxon continues with yours truly, Rob McConnell, from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.